to bring it back to Andrew's point to begin with, uh, this is a medium size <laughs> stack. But I would have preferred a small actually, because I like to show up my muscle. <laughs> I'm told I've got my sort of Anyway, uh, just a quick one on what I'm wearing. You know, I didn't actually, you know, I got to college this evening and went, oh hell. He's running for sports and society's officer, isn't he? I mean, it's pretty obvious. But I didn't make that decision at 8 o'clock this morning when I uh, rather sleepily got out of it, got out of bed. Uh, so who am I? Well, says that. I'm Adrian Wadiev. Uh, you may know me as the person who didn't get this job last time I ran for it. Um, thanks, guys. Oh, well, that's the case for me. Um, yeah, yeah. So I'm back again for the second time. So that's me. Uh, um, what I've done, so why should... Um, yeah, so why should you vote for me? Well, um, you know, Ron and I are good friends, fair to say. And I'm a competitive person, so please vote for me. I don't want my other friend to win, so <laughs> don't let Ron win. Um, I am currently the captain of a D uh, Durham University Cricket Club side. I've captained, as some of you will know, I'm currently, currently the captain of St John's College Cricket and St John's College Table Tennis, so I'm uh, pretty big in the college sporting world. <laughs> Uh, potentially, <laughs> not that any of you will know that because cricket and table tennis are two sports which nobody plays in John's College. Um, I like to think that I'm important, don't be around here, but apparently not. Um, so, yeah, I'm also involved in one of the largest student organisations in Durham, that is uh, Purple Radio. Um, I like to think that John's is a community. Uh, I feel as if uh, in sports and societies, especially, that's when the collegiate system really becomes obvious in Durham. Uh, it's not really apparent when you go to lectures which college you are, except for if you wear stash, like I did today. Uh, but it's kind of that moment when you play sport, uh, when all the uh, year groups kind of merge together. Um, you kind of, you know, that's, that's the moment for me when I feel proud to be uh, a Johnian uh, when I'm playing sport. And it's a great opportunity, I always think, if you play sport, involved in societies, to get to know uh, people from different year groups. That's how I'd like to encourage participation. I know that participation has been down a bit this year. Uh, it's something I'd like to, uh, to work on and think about potentially over the summer of how to, how to change that. I feel as if people don't seem to realise that if you do any job application, any job interview, they'll ask, um, you know, work, show examples of how you've been in a team, how you've worked as a team, if you've captained a team, and really uh, it's a great opportunity to get involved in jobs, sport and societies for that reason, for that reason alone. Um, one thing I'm very passionate about actually is uh, social media. And I think a lot of you are really good, great athletes, and you don't really get the, you know, the plaudits that you deserve. I mean, yes, okay, we have the colour ceremony, but that's three years. And for three years, you've been great. Um, so I feel as if the use of social media to promote that uh, would, be, would be really good. That's one. <laughs> that's a cricketer. I'm not very happy with that. That's a poor drop, but never mind. Uh, so absolutely, so that's why I'd like to be your... Uh, John, uh, your sports and societies officer for John's. I'll keep it short. I've got university challenge to watch straight after this. So, okay. Yeah, that's a really good point, and I think that's partially linked potentially to why participation levels haven't been so great. It's very hard for these people to come from overseas, obviously, and kind of fit in in that first couple of weeks. Obviously, we have freshers fair in the first three days. Uh, so it's definitely something that we need to look at in the future, and potentially that's kind of built into this, the John's community, that they have to be uh, kind of assimilated into the, into the community better to begin with from a social point of view, and then perhaps there'll be more interested, you know, if they've got friends already, they might, who are already playing sports, they might come and join us uh, playing sports and something like that. Any other questions? Andrew? For society's space is becoming a problem in college. At the start of each term, it's almost like a race between groups like cheerleading, 
DCC, JMS, John Zumba, the book Leech Hall. Uh, College Communion. Well, yeah, <laughs> I'm talking more sports yeah. and societies, but yeah, of course, on a Tuesday. Ta table tennis as well, I've got to say, because oh, I've right, tried several go. times to try and get so, in here. What would you do to make it easier for different societies to work together in making sure that each has the chance to rehearse practice in the space available in college? And what do you think about the proposals to turn the existing library <laughs> into, <laughs> <all right. laughs> into a multi-purpose sports, societies, arts facilitator? Well, we've got to be definitely a bit more specific as to what that's going to eventually be. Obviously, uh, you know, uh, we need more space. In John's, that's quite clear. Um, obviously, as a table tennis captain myself, I've tried to get matches in here. Simply not possible. It's completely oversubscribed. Uh, so we do need to work on uh, making more space. I also think that we do need a bit more collaboration between the Sports and Societies Officer and the various societies and the, you know, the people in charge of their societies because you know, uh, captain of two clubs that I am, I've barely ever spoken to the Sports and Societies Officer and I feel as if we need a bit more you know, crossover between that and that's something that I'll probably try and work towards and getting to know you a bit better and getting to know the, the society's requirements and kind of what times they can practice and what times they can't, etc. and try and work out a schedule perhaps on the back of that. Cara? I'm Emily Manfred-Walker, who's current Sports and Societies Officer. Yeah, she beat me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's a good point that, and I feel as if it's quite right, is that the number of first years involved in college sports going down. I think college sports generally actually is slightly less popular than it was. I feel as if there's been a big increase in the number of people who represent the university, and I think that's had a big impact on uh, the college life. I mean, there's just so many different sports in the university to get involved in, so that might be linked to that. Um, in terms of encouraging first years, obviously, uh, I think, you know, showing people uh, part of the social media points that I was thinking of, potentially you know, giving them shout outs as to when they've done well for Johns. I think that encourages people to get involved because you know, this is what happens at, when they're at a uh, university level. Um, and I also think the opportunity for leadership, as I've spoken about already, is quite critical. It's unlikely that you'll ever be a captain of a university side, but being captain of a college side will give you an edge over someone who's never been a captain in a job interview, potentially third down the line. So we've got to encourage that kind of stuff and get that out uh, pretty much in Freshers' Week, potentially with a presentation or something in literal <coughs> during Freshers' Week. Okay, thank you. Uh, Connor? Um, so from a treasurer's perspective, one of the most important parts of uh, the Sports and Society's Officer's role um, is, the, is keeping track of the finances. Yeah. Um, obviously, each Sports and Society has their own uh, treasurer, should have their own treasurer. Um, but how would you um, make sure that they are managing their finance as well? Yeah, that's something obviously uh, you may have a bit of a grudge with me over since I need bankrupt you over the cricket. Uh, <laughs> for, um, because I exceeded my budget uh, by a long, long way with that. Uh, and something to be very, uh, something to keep an eye on, obviously, because obviously we don't want the uh, college to go into debt because the sports and societies. Personally, I don't actually think that all societies have treasurers. So that's something we've probably got to implement because I certainly don't in two of my published clubs. It might be my fault, actually. I don't know. Uh, but it's definitely something that we need, look, need to look at and work closely with the treasurer uh, to achieve and to make sure that there's enough funding to go around for all the various uh, college, uh, college sports and societies. Is there anything in particular you do to keep tabs on, on the finances of the sports and societies? Um, I think, obviously, if there's going to be large funds, I mean, there's so many different organisations and, and, you know, committees looking at those kind of finances. I don't feel as if it's up to me personally, but it's, it's good to know, for example, which club spent how much the previous year and going forward how we can build that into the budget potentially and see whether some groups should be getting a bit more because they didn't spend as much the year before, etc., and be a bit more balanced about it. And it comes out. Two more questions from Molly. Um, as a captain who isn't on the captain page, how will you ensure communication is kept up with all captains and heads of all societies and sports? Well, that's something to do with building up a bit of a relationship between each 
each captain to an extent. As I said before, that I've had very little contact with sports societies officer. It feels as if um, you're very much an independent kind of body uh, inside John's College, and it feels as if just you know slightly irregular post doesn't really do the job, does it? And doesn't really keep you informed about what's going on in the college sporting world. So uh, definitely building a relationship between each captain and also making sure that's updated a lot more often going forward. Last question for Sam. Um, so, uh, the men of Crown Common Room have a very sort of boring schedule where they work Monday to Friday yeah. pretty much all day, uh, and also sometimes on Saturday. Um, but a lot of the people that I've spoken to are members of Crown Common have said that they really want to get involved in sports society. How are you going to help overcome that schedule and get them involved in sports society? It's interesting you bring that up because it's something that Andrew actually asked the candidates the last first time I was involved in about getting kind of postgraduates involved in college life. And I know that certain members of Crammer Common Room have actually walked in and said, I didn't even know this existed, talking about table tennis society actually. Um, so I do see it's a bit of a point is that they may not even know it exists, and the fact is they may not be able to participate themselves. So it's something about potentially going into Crammer and having a, a chat with them about the various societies that are on offer, especially during Freshers Week again, uh, and getting people uh, aware of what we do and trying to uh, basically synthesize uh, the two common rooms together. All right, thank you very much.